Devon and Somerset has been labelled an unmitigated disaster and a shambles by the chairman of the all-party parliamentary group on broadband. The two counties are the only place in the country where work isn't yet underway to achieve the government's pledged target of 95% coverage by the end of next year. Johnny Rutherford reports. Fighting against the elements and the terrain to provide super-fast broadband to residents on Dartmoor. Not the easiest job with the various contours of the landscape, but one that this high-speed wireless company says it can achieve this year, helping to meet the government's pledge of 95% of broadband coverage across the country by the end of 2017. What we're doing is we're taking the fibre from places like Exeter and uh, Torquay from Surf Telecom. It comes up to a unit like this, a, a wireless microwave ring. It goes from these units then and transmits to a unit like this on the home. And this will deliver super fast broadband speeds of over 30 meg to the customers on, on the moors. By the way, that's more than three times what you need to watch this program on the iPlayer. But Dartmoor and Exmoor are special cases, exempt from the main scheme. In our pottery and in many other rural parts of Devon and Somerset, there's no hope of super fast broadband at any time soon because the rollout programme has stalled. The deal between the main provider BT and Devon and Somerset councils collapsed last June. That's something that Somerset MP Ian Little Granger says could have been easily avoided with a bit more determination by the councillors. What you can't do is stick your head in the sand like an ostrich and stick your bottom in the air and pretend there's actually nothing wrong, which is what Devon and Summit are doing. And this is why I am so cross on behalf of my constituents. They're far too wet to deal with this sort of stuff. They walked away and that we were left in this embarrassing situation of having lost the procurement window. And now me explaining to my constituents why they're not going to get phase two because of ineptitude in Exeter. Little people making big decisions, always a bad formula. As you, as you can see sort of down uh, to the south of the building, we've got the demo areas. Um, the, the Chartered surveyor Ian Firth got totally fed up waiting for broadband to come to his village of Churchingford. So much so he moved to an industrial unit next to the M5 in Columpton, adding an hour's commute to his day's work. I'm furious to be honest. We specialise in, in rural planning. We work with rural clients all the time. Um, all of our work, as far as we physically can manage to do it, is paperless. Literally everything we do is reliant on a decent internet connection and it's becoming more and more pressing every, every week that we, we get a, a decent availability of information and, and provision of information as well. At Westminster this week, questions were being asked about the delay in the rollout. Interesting viewing across the internet for people like Ian as MPs gathered to mull over the mess. Effectively, we were presented with coverage which didn't get to 95% for either county. Despite asking for priority to go into the hardest to reach socially economically deprived areas, BT wouldn't, wouldn't produce a response uh, to that detail. My people want broadband. Broadband is the same now as having a television, a fridge and a dishwasher. They see it that it's one of the rights they need and they do need it. If I want businesses in West Somerset and I want people to come there and set up a business from home or whatever, they've got to have broadband. They haven't got it. In Little Granger now says he wants the culture secretary to strip the Devon and Somerset councils of their broadband contract powers and take control of the deal. Johnny Rutherford reporting. Well, earlier I spoke via Skype to the League councillor responsible for the Connecting Devon and Somerset programme and asked him how he felt about Mr Little Granger describing him as incompetent. Um... I suppose I'm rather used to politicians uh, making snap judgments and making comments to grab the media attention. I can't say it's comfortable, to be honest with you, um, simply because the comments that I've seen have no basis in fact. His principal point is that it would have been possible for you to have obtained a deal, a better deal with, with BT, but you weren't determined enough. Ultimately, we have to go for good value for money for the members of the public. We're spending public money. We can't just give it to BT, as been suggested, and hope that they'll deliver. They proved to us that they couldn't deliver, so we had no alternative but to step away at that point. OK, your programme director was giving evidence to the Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee in Westminster this week. She said one of the problems in the first phase of this, when BT had their contract, was that you obviously wanted to prioritise the difficult rural areas and they just went for the easy places, and there was no way you could hold them to account. 
Now, her opposite number from the West Yorkshire partnership was there as well, and he said they made sure that BT did have to promise they would address the difficult rural areas first. <laughs> well, BT couldn't deliver against uh, the negotiations that we were trying to conduct. The chief allegation from Mr Little Granger is that you didn't negotiate hard enough. Now, the chairman of the West Yorkshire Partnership was pushed on <coughs> this by the MPs and he said there was resistance from BT, but they pushed ahead anyway and said, well, actually, this is what we want, this is what people need, and essentially BT had a back down and agreed to it. No, hang on, hang on. It was absolutely clear in our negotiation, we pushed this to the absolute wire, that BT were not prepared to bend, and the offer they were putting on the table was, in our opinion, and in the opinion that would have been of the public, a substandard offer that wouldn't have delivered. We couldn't accept that. And just finally, have you got any idea as to where we are in the process of actually getting this deal finally nailed down now? We're waiting for BDUK to sort out some technical issues around uh, state aid from Europe. The intention is that uh, the, the new tender will go out to market in the spring. I'm still ever hopeful that we may be able to conclude a deal and tie a deal up by late summer and start delivery uh, towards the end of this year. Judith, I want to talk about Cornwall briefly, because that's where you live. Cornwall had a lot of money from the European Union to supposedly at least roll out superfast yeah. broadband. And I know that means that even in rural North Cornwall, I think there's 79% coverage, but people will be in Cornwall ready to tweet now and say there are still all kinds of problems with it. Oh, that's, that's absolutely right. You, you've only got to walk down the high street and someone will stop you and say, um, I still haven't got mine, I've been waiting for ages, I keep getting fobbed off with this, that and the other. But with any contract like this, it's the last 5% that's the most difficult. You can, want, you can go through the towns and the large villages really very easily, but it's the places at the end of our, our sort of country lanes that are difficult, but they're really, really important because we're trying to get people down here to up our economy um, and the connectivity. It's exactly the same as the rail, argue. We, we need the broadband just as much as we need the rail. Uh, Johnny, I know this, of course, isn't uh, a big problem in cities, but... Uh, well, you say that, Martin. 44% yeah. of my constituents in Plymouth Moorview do not have access to the broadband um, uh, standard and quality that the government has set of 10 megabytes per second. So, you know, we have a long way to go on this. And, and you're absolutely right. It's fundamental to our economic development into, you know, if we're going to increase our opportunities for young people, if we're going to get the companies down, we have to provide this infrastructure. It's a major part of it, and we've got to get delivering it. Okay, the, PM, well, the PM has actually made a promise, 2020, you well, know. And, and that, that's going to be... I, when he made it, I thought, Crumbs, you're a brave chap. But I think it's going to be really, really difficult. Well, well this is the point, John, isn't it? The, the, we, we have a government pledge. In Devon and Somerset, at least, we seem to have a lot of Conservatives falling out with each other and it, not... It not proceeding. Well, I think... Uh, that, I, you know, yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair point. I, I, I don't know about the, the sort of difficulties that are going on there. I know that this government is committed to it because I've seen the work that they do, but I think there's some serious questions to be had there about, uh, about BT and the delivering of it. But let's not underestimate how difficult it is to get to that last 5% and, and to make it economically viable. There are some serious you know, questions to be answered here, and hopefully by working together we can get there in the end. Judith, has the government essentially gone about it the right way? It could, because it's decided that BT is really the main provider, could have negotiated a big deal for the whole country and not left places like Devon and Somerset negotiating these individual deals and seeing them fall through. I think they've made the same sort of mistake as Labour did with the NHS and IT contract. The technology isn't quite there yet to get the life last 5% on mm. the same time scale as the rest. Um, I think... I think It'll be there probably in, in 10 years' time, but that's still not, not going to help those last five. 